is the amount of work that you've set as a ground stone for, you know, I, I don't know if that's a right term, for someone to come in and piggyback and go the next way, this is going to be powerful decoding for all of us because then it's shared out. It's like, hey, we cracked another one, you know, that starts to go out in the ether. We cracked another one. So I just want to commend you on on, on your work and connecting these dots and, and doing what you do. So the last question is simply, is there anything that you wish that I asked or anything that you want to close with or, or chat about before we shut it down? Yeah, so thanks very much, Matt. It's been really a pleasure. Um, I would say that I, I would echo off of what you just said is that there are so many different paths. And I would say, I don't think it's new or that it wasn't available, but it wasn't necessarily available in what we call the West. Right, so you talked about yoga that's been here for thousands of years, Tai Chi. So it's been available, but it got suppressed in a certain part of the world. But it's not necessarily that I'm unveiling something that's new because, as I showed in that painting from the early 1800s, and I could show you from the 1300s, 1400s, 1500s. This was understood, or someone did know it, but I think it got suppressed, or maybe it was always uh, kept, the full knowledge was always kept to, um, you know, a small circle, but everyone was allowed to go to the Eleusinian Mysteries. So um, I believe what has happened is, unfortunately, it's been used for some bad purposes. You did mention that like um, if you want to keep it to a small circle and argue that it should only be kept to a small circle then don't go stamp out the culture of the native americans with your interpretation or don't go uh, colonize the world and tell them that they have to accept the bible literally so um, i believe that it's always been there and you could always find a teacher to teach you in the stream has been uh, choked off in some areas more than another so in india the stream of yoga has been has not been choked off it goes all the way back to ancient times in china the stream of uh, certain practices qigong or martial arts has been preserved in the West, it got suppressed. And that's why people in the West are saying, oh, I feel like I need to go to a teacher from a Native American tradition or from India or from China, because why? It didn't get stamped out in certain places. So I just wanna say, uh, I don't think I'm offering something new. I'm saying I'm offering, uh, I'm pointing to things that are very, very old. And these paintings that existed in the West show that the, the streams did they were preserved in the West too, but unfortunately, um, you did have people saying, don't listen to Mr. Miyagi, it's only about waxing the car. Well, meanwhile, they were using Kung Fu to beat people up in other parts of the world, so that's not good. Um, but how to get back in touch with it, the, so you asked what kind of, to end on a positive note, I think you're absolutely right that there are all these paths and there are paths you know that will fit your you know everybody you don't have to do yoga and tai chi and breath work and um also become a master of i don't know you know qigong i think if you pick one path and get really deep on that path that uh any path that you choose will get you to these places. So it could be, like you said, forms of art like ballet or painting or singing. It could be chanting. I think there are all these methods that have survived in all parts of the world, even in places where it's been suppressed. You know, art, sculpture, are, are paths that you can take. But um, ultimately, I think these things are about blessing and not cursing so raising the consciousness when we think of swear words you know you were you're saying what the flying f-bomb all those swear words 
They're also called cursing, right? Well, don't cuss at me or don't curse at me. What are curse words? They're things that like force people down. And most of our curse words have to do with bodily functions. Like you're just a F or a A or an S or a whatever, right? Why? Because cursing is trying to force someone to be just the sum of their physical body or calling someone the, a racial epithet or a derogatory term for a woman or something. What are you doing? You're denying their spiritual higher self and saying, you're nothing but uh, an F. You're nothing but a physical function. Well, that's not actually true. That's actually a lie. Every single person you ever meet is, you know, in the story of Arjun and Krishna, which one are you? Well, the answer is both. You're the, you've got a higher self. Now, I do believe the gods are real. But in the story of Castor and Pollux, these divine twins, one of them's mortal, one of them's immortal. Which one is you? Both. You've got a mortal part to you, but you've also got an immortal part that will live on after the body. Um, I think that's what the myths are saying. So cursing is seeing yourself as nothing more than a physical body or your physical limitations and not acknowledging or getting in touch at all with your higher self and cursing someone else is trying to force them down into just a physical or just the sum of a of their skin color or something that's the all those myths the bible has many many verses about you should be blessing not cursing so i think doing practices like qigong are a form of blessing elevating getting in touch with things that are spiritual or tai chi or yoga those are forms of elevating and getting in touch with our higher self but also just as we go around the day we can practice blessing in our mind and not cursing and it's really hard to do like that's a discipline i could do every day and never be a master because i slip into cursing so easily whether you're cursing yourself mm. or cursing someone else so mm. that's um that's what we shouldn't be doing we should be more and more blessing so in, mm. in disciplines like meditation or breathing or tai chi can help us with that so that's where uh, that's where I'll live it, but I leave it. But I really am uh, grateful to the perspective that you bring. So you bring out different things in uh, with your questions. So I really appreciate the chance to interact with you. Awesome, brother. Well, yeah, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, it's been fascinating, and I look forward to staying in touch and and maybe doing a round two and just you know start deciphering this. You know, I invite everybody to go check out your your blog because I looked I looked through there. There's a lot of information. If you're interested in it, it's a very deep well of knowledge. And just wanted to wish everybody out there a happy solstice and and to you know you really wrapped it up on a beautiful note. It's simple practices and they can be challenging, and they're transformative when you apply them. And so you know if we can just start to embody these things, and that's it to embody to do. And we're moving into, you know, the light of the year and all that stuff. So happy solstice to everybody. And, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Matt. See you, brother. See you, everybody. Yeah,